Yeah, it's time for top five in five minutes, and we're gonna start off with the top five wedges of 2019, according to The Average Golfer. Right, we've got five minutes, so I'm gonna to have to be very, very brief, but what I wanna say before I start is that all the products that I'm gonna mention in this top five, I will have tried myself personally, and I will also take into consideration when we've done some group testing of Team Average and their thoughts and opinions too. Anyway, it is time. Let's get the stopwatch started. There we go, we're off. And at number five, first product into the mix. It's the Ping Glide 3. Very, very briefly, what do I like about it, what don't I? Well, I like it performs extremely well in the wet conditions. I think that's been said by on many, many videos, and it certainly did that when I tested it. But uh, disappointing things, I think the way it looks is not my particular cup of tea. I think it's a very much a Marmite product. Uh, and for that reason, it only makes it in at number five. Number four, it is the Titleist Voki SM7. New product on the way from them into 2020. We'll see how that gets on. And one of the things they've done with the 2020 product is something that I'm going to be critical about um, the 2019 product in that they've revamped it. They've revamped it in terms of its visuals. And I think that was the problem for me. Uh, the pros are you get what you see on your tin. It is a very, 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 very good all round performer as you'd expect from a Vokey Wedge. Disappointing thing was it looked exactly the same as all the rest of them. And they didn't do much in terms of aesthetics for me in terms of moving the bar forward. Might matter to many, but if I'm changing my product, I like to see a little bit of difference as well. And they've certainly changed the game into 2020. Right, next up, number three. It's a product from Callaway. It's the Jaws. Um, I really, interesting one when I reviewed this out on the course, it started off as a bit of a slow burner and when I started to use it in and around a number of different positions, it performed really, really well. It, it, it The control element was fantastic. Again, did exactly what you'd want from every wedge, a lot of control. And a disappointing bit, well the fact was it had blue dots on it and it's as simple as that, that was the only negative I could find. And what Liverpool supporter wants blue dots on his wedges, well there's not many, I can tell you that. Anyway, fickle I know. Uh, next up is the TaylorMade Mill Grind 2 wedges. Now these things for me, uh, let's see how long we've got on this clock by the way. Three minutes still to go, we've got plenty of time. Uh, unfortunately, why is that disappearing so I can't see it? Let's see that stopwatch up on display right there. Two minutes 55 and get going. Uh, Mill Grind 2, first of all, looks superb. Available in a number of finishes. I think there was the chrome, there was the black, and there was the rust or raw finish. Uh, again, or was it just the, actually, no, I, I take it, I tell light, it was the black and the chrome, but it was a raw finish in terms of the face. And I thought they looked superb, first and foremost. A great new redesign in terms of what TaylorMade had put together. But it performed exceptionally well. Almost in some instances too well in terms of grip and spin. You had to get, uh, I played a lot off camera with it, something you had to get used to and familiarise yourself with in terms of the control, but you'd really throw a ball in there and expect it to check up and do a job. Disappointing element for me, I think very few to be perfectly honest with you. I suppose it's again high on the price end, but that's why it's in at number two. But number one, the number one wedge for me from 2019, and I don't even know if it lapses into their 2020 product, so there might be some confusion here, but the Cleveland CBX version two. Fantastic product, uh, difficult to pick fault with. And I, I, I picked this for a reason. I picked it with the average golfer in mind done a lot of videos in recent weeks and I, I, I sort of I, you know the angle I come at this all from from the perspective of an average golfer and how many golfers would benefit from dropping off a blade style wedge let's call them all the other clubs I've really just thrown into the mix in the previous four how many would be better dropping that kind and almost going to a game improvement iron I suppose you'd call it a game improvement wedge rather which would be very very similar to the sets of irons that we play and I think for me that's what it does it's more of a game improvement and it's packed with forgiveness you can play it from every single kind of lie uh, and it does a job even coming out of bunkers I think it was a massive assistance for you and again it's in at the right price point so for me it gets the number one how long have I got left? I don't like the fact, I've got 58 seconds still to go in our five minute slot. I've got to find out why this keeps disappearing and stop it going into sleep mode so I can see this thing. Uh, but with that time to spare, what I will say is this, it is very uh, subjective in terms of a top five. I've got to give a little bit of reasoning and it's a very personal reasoning. 
But what I would like to understand is, it's all about getting custom fit for you personally. And the biggest question I've got to ask is, what is your number one wedge of 2015? That is the most important bit. So stick your answer down in the comments box below. And uh, that's me done. And for the last time, 23 seconds to go, we did it quite easy. That's me signing off. Best wedges of 2019 according to the average golfer. See you soon.